Good evening. What you're about to witness is an unrehearsed, uncensored interview. My name is Mike Wallace. The cigarette is Philip Morris. New Philip Morris, probably the best natural smoke you ever tasted, presents... Mike Wallace interview. Tonight we go after the story of a beautiful blonde who has made a fortune by taking off her clothes in public. You see her behind me. She's the leading strip teaser in America, Lily St. Cyr, whose uninhibited dancing is matched only by her uninhibited attitudes toward marriage, alimony, religion, and politics. If you're curious to know how Lily St. Cyr and her husband feel about her act and her audience, if you'd like to hear how a girl becomes a strip teaser, and if you want to know what Lily St. Cyr means when she says, if I were a man, I'd never bother to get married. We'll go after those stories in just a moment. My guests' opinions are not necessarily mine. The stations are my sponsors, Philip Morris Incorporated, but whether you agree or disagree, we feel that none will deny the right of these views to be broadcast. Does a natural tasting cigarette, natural tasting, sound good to you? And how about mildness? Wouldn't you like genuine mildness in every cigarette you smoke? Well, this cigarette, Philip Morris, gives me both. I get natural taste and mildness, what I call a man's kind of mildness every time and every puff. I'm told the reason is that today's Philip Morris is made from a special blend of lighter leaf tobaccos that give both natural taste and natural mildness. I hope you try today's Philip Morris on my say-so. I think you like this natural taste the same as I do. I think you like the genuine mildness that's here, too. And there's no filter, no fluid, no artificial mildness, because, you see, there's nothing between you and the tobacco itself. So get with Philip Morris and enjoy a man's kind of mildness. And now to our story. Lily St. Cyr, a tall, sensuous blonde, is the most famous strip teaser in America. The leader in a profession that has become something of an institution in show business. She makes more than $100,000 a year for shedding filmy garments, taking baths, and dancing provocatively on stage. Let's try to find out what attitudes, what ambitions, what needs and emotions make a striptease artist. Lily, first of all, and I hope that you'll be perfectly candid with me about this. First of all, I'd like to know your personal opinion of the men who sit in nightclubs and burlesque houses and watch you strip. I'm flattered by their attention. I can't judge them as a group because I don't like to judge any people in groups, but as individuals, some men um, offer constructive criticism about my act. Really? And, criticism uh, that you take seriously? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. If they don't like a certain dress or a certain piece of music or something I'm doing. Other men uh, have some other reason to come to see me. Uh -huh. <laughs> each one has a different reason. Well, when you say each one, what do you think is the reason that most men come? Is it is it for a vicarious, let's put it a different way, let's put it a different way. I talked yesterday with Sherry Britton, who was another leading strip teaser, and she said the following. She said, whenever I used to see groups of single men coming to see me strip, I'd think what unfortunate, what lonely people, that they have no better place to spend their time. They have no real contact with the human race, so they come to see me for the strongest experience possible while at the same time being alone. Now she evidently feels that that is the attitude of a large share of the strip teaser's audience. Do you agree with Sherry Britton? No. I don't think they're necessarily lonely. Uh, some of them come with their wives or sweethearts or friends. Mm -hmm. What do you think of women, uh, Lily? What do you think of women who come to see a girl take off her clothes? What are they after? You must have thought about it. I'm quite a striptease man myself. 
Are you really? Yes. In my time off, I quite often go to see shows that have striptease dancers. Why do you go? Do you go to, to, to see what the competition is doing, or, or do you get a lift out of it? Do you get some kind of a vicarious thrill out of it? I enjoy seeing a beautiful woman dancing and... And, uh, and taking off her clothes, does that add to your enjoyment? Yes, I suppose it does. I've never really analyzed it enough to... Mm -hmm. Well, suppose there were a male equivalent of the striptease, a kind of a, I think they call it beefcake mm -hmm. performance, in which a man got up on stage the way that you do and started to take off his clothes. Would you approve of that kind of thing? No, because I, I don't particularly like men to be in show business. I think it's really a panty waist profession for a man. Actors are panty waist? Well, it's sort of a feminine thing to do to get up on the stage and act and cavort around. Well, now we're talking, you're talking about actors generally. I'm talking about men who would do the equivalent of the female striptease. You think that this is just not a good idea? No, not when it's calculated. If you see a good-looking man walking along the beach, it's casual and fascinating. But on the stage, it's planned, and then it loses its intrigue. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, you, that you've heard this question before. What do you think about while you go through the gyrations which are calculated to arouse the most basic emotions in people who watch you. What do you actually think about? On the stage, one usually has to think about one's next movement. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking what I'm going to do next. Mm -hmm. I have no personal... Involvement? No. You don't think about any human being, a group of human beings, or anything of that sort, a man or a woman, you're just thinking about, uh, about doing the dance. Yes, my next action. I, I have no uh, feeling to the audience at all. Tell me this. I, I know that you have been arrested, I gather, from time to time for indecent exposure, maybe three or four times. What do you think of the public officials, the civic and religious groups, the private citizens who charge the, that the striptease is lewd and immoral, that its sole function is to arouse lust in an audience. Naturally, I don't believe that I'm arousing any lust in the audience. I never do anything that I believe is wrong. Well, when you say uh, you don't do anything that you believe is wrong, you know that... Let, let's be perfectly sensible. Uh, I, I dare say that 98% of your audience goes not to watch a beautiful dance, but, but they go to see the act and the implications in the act. Isn't that so? I can't answer for the audience. Mm -hmm. I can only answer for myself. Well, yesterday you told our reporter, you said, if I do demoralize an audience, as some people might say, then I'm glad I do it. He said, people need some loosening up. Most of the people in this country are too hypocritical. Underneath, we're all the same, you said. Only too many put on a front of being shocked by certain kinds of behavior. Now, what did you mean by that, Lily? Well, it's a joke to think I could demoralize anyone with this little act. <laughs> if one has morals, mm -hmm. then they can't be taken away by me or anyone else. Well, when you say that most people in this country are too hypocritical, uh, underneath we're all the same, except too many put on a front of being shocked by certain kinds of behavior. Why do you think that certain civic groups, certain religious groups, and certain private citizens uh, make these representations against you in the kind of work that you do? And for commercial reasons. For commercial reasons? What do you mean? Well, if one is head of a group and gets paid for it, they have to prove that they're earning their money some way, and I'm certainly an easy victim to pick on. And you think that there's just pure hypocrisy involved, and they're just trying to make a dollar by going after you? 
Certainly, otherwise they would go after things that are of more importance, but more difficult. Like for instance? Well, we have many crimes <laughs> that should be taken care of. And you feel as though you're committing certainly no crime? No. Billy, have you ever done anything that you're ashamed of? Yes. Oh? But he was so handsome I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's find out uh, what you try to do for your audience. Now, when a writer writes a book, Lily, he tries to tell us something. Isn't that mm -hmm. so? When a performer plays a piano or a violin, he tries to give us beautiful music. What do you think that you are trying to do for your audience? I'm trying to amuse them for a few minutes. That's all. Mm. It's not art. We hear so many strippers say, well, my act isn't just a strip, it's beautiful, it's art. It's, an, it's a dance that means something. Do you feel that you're an artist? No. You think the talk of art in burlesque is nonsense? Yes. Have you, have you ever felt that you would like to do more than you do in show business? Did, have you ever felt as though... Let's put it this way. Are you proud of what you do? No. You're not? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> Are you ashamed of what you do? I would rather be doing something else. Like, for instance? I would rather be in legitimate business of some kind. But why do you do what you do under those circumstances, Lily? I must make money, and uh, it's the only thing I'm trained for. I don't know how to do anything else. But why must you make money? You're, you're married. Uh, you can have your husband support you. Well, wh why this necessity? Well, I haven't always been married. I've had to work all my life. Uh -huh. How did you get into the business? No. By accident. I went with my sister to for an interview with uh, NTG, and my mother sent me along to watch out for her. She was very young. And, uh, how old were you at the time? Eighteen. How she old? was sixteen. Uh -huh. and, uh, she was going to dance at NTG's club? Yes. And then he offered me a job as well. So I took it because I was being a waitress at the time, and I thought it would be easier than being a waitress which it is. We mentioned Sherry Britton, uh, the stripper, a moment ago. We asked her how she felt the first time that she did this act in public. And she told us, I was horribly embarrassed with all those eyes peering at me. After it was over, I was terribly upset, but after a while I got over my embarrassment. I got numb to it. How did you feel the first time? I'm never conscious of the audience because I'm always so frightened, <laughs> stage fright, that I don't... Uh, you are what? I have stage fright, always. I've never gotten over that. Well, is, is, it, is it a kind of... Uh, are you being perfectly sincere? Are you really are frightened when you perform in front of these people? Yes, I, I don't like having people look at me. Well, naturally now, I will... And you say you don't, you don't like people to look at you, and yet you let people look at all of you in the most exhibitionist kind of poses and so forth. It, it seems a little difficult to reconcile your agony at appearing in public and the fact that you appear in public in the most exposed kind of fashion. It's just as difficult for me to walk into a cocktail party as it is to be on the stage because when people are looking at me, it makes me nervous. On the stage, I'm just a little more terrified than if I were to walk into a room full of people I didn't know. Why, why does this terrify you so? Do you know? Have you ever tried to analyze it for yourself or have somebody else try to analyze it for you? No. 